This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today, transcribed, we present Chapter 5, Book 71, entitled Father Barber's Aching Bones. The Sky Ranch vacation is in full swing, and with the exception of Pinky, working out his destination in the lumber camp for the summer, and Joan staying in town with Paul and working through vacation at the airfield, with these three exceptions, everyone is up in the high country, 40 miles down the peninsula from San Francisco. Paul and Joan were down for the weekend, but are now back in the city, and here at the Sky Ranch are Hazel and Mother Barber and the morning mail. Margaret just brought the mail up from the mailbox, Mother. Lots of letters and magazines. Well, it's early today. The rural free delivery must be improving. Anything for me? We'll see. Magazines for Nikki and Claudia, forwarded from Seacliff. A bill. Bill. Another bill. Who are the bills for? Another bill. Nikki, poor darling. Bill. I'll bet this one's for the electric dishwasher. I don't care how much that dishwasher cost. It was worth it. <laughs> It'll be worth it, even if I had to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's popularity has reached a new high with his women folk. Bill. Bill, letter for Nicolette, one for Betty, two for Jack, business letters, letter for Cliff. Mmm, smells good. Oh, it's from Loretta Evans. Oh, Cliff's out at the horseshoe court. I'll call him. Two more bills for Nicky. <laughs> These improvements up here must have set him back a pretty penny. Oh, Cliff! Yeah, Mom? Letter, letter for you. Mail just came. I'll be right there. Does anybody ever get time to read all these magazines? Well, I do, from cover to cover. Say, there's a letter for me? Right here, Cliff. There it is. Oh, thanks. Mmm, from Roberta. Here's one from Pinky. Oh, it isn't for me. What's well, for Father? That one, too. Where is Father? Hmm. I took him a tray this morning. He's still upstairs. He would ride that motor scooter last night. I knew it would happen. That's all. Nothing from Pinky for me. I did I hear you say the mayor is here? His hearing wasn't impaired. Yes, Henry, are you coming down? Anything for me? Letter for you. Do you think you can get down the stairs, Henry? Or do you want me to bring it up to you? I'm coming, Fanny. I'm coming up perfectly all right. Mm. He's so stiff he can hardly move. Man his age falling off a motor scooter. Why, that could have been serious at his age. Oh, Cliff, what's the matter? What? what? Oh. Oh, it's nothing really except... Uh... Roberta says she can't come back this weekend. Oh, that's too bad, Fred. But why not? Seems to have some sort of a job at the university for the summer. Well, not weekends, too. It's a doggone funny. Seems to be a little vague about the weekend. Mm. Here comes your father. Watch him coming downstairs pretending he isn't sore and stiff. <laughs> sore in flesh and spirit both. Huh? Everyone's staring at me? Don't stare at me, Fanny. No hurry this morning, is there? We're on vacation, I believe. No reason to dash up and down the stairs two steps at a time. Nor any danger of it. Oh, is he? Miss Evans isn't coming to Sky Ranch this weekend. Huh? Oh, Skippy did a good job. Oh, oh, good morning, Chris. Skippy did a good job. What do you mean? My, look at these home and garden magazines in color. If lawns would only actually look the way they do in pictures. Dad, what about Andy? Has he anything to do with this? Andy? Did I say Andrew? You said Skippy did a good job. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. He, he polishes that motor scooter night and morning. <laughs> now, now, there's a tip for fathers, Clifford. When a father wants to win the undying loyalty and affection of his son, you just give him a shiny red motor scooter. Here, here. You say there's a letter here for me, Fanny? I'm jealous, Father. Huh? A nice fat letter from Pinky. For me, eh? Well, well. Oh, uh, Clifford, don't you want to stay in here? No, thank you, Dan. I haven't seen Andy this morning. I think I'd better have a little chat with him. You'll need another scooter to catch him. Well, let's take this letter someplace where there's a reasonable chance of being uninterrupted. For all the children at the swimming pool in the patio, how about the front porch? Yes, yes. Wait for me. I'm going to send somebody around with all this mail. Yes, yes. We'll just get settled out for it. Uh, go ahead, Fanny. Go ahead. I'm in no hurry. Henry, I want you to answer me. Answer you what? Do you hurt somewhere? Fanny, will you not keep at me, please? I'm all right. You might have broken your neck. Getting on a motor scooter. Worse than that, I'll never hear the end of it. Showing off at your age. I wasn't showing off. Well, I don't know what else you'd call it. Picking the steepest hill on a motor scooter and then falling off. Fanny, I did not fall off. It, it skidded. Perfectly ridiculous performance. 
Well, aren't you going to sit down? <laughs> well, why don't you? Henry, if it hurt you to sit down, you'd better send for Dr. Thompson and have him take some x-rays. I'm not going to have any x-rays, Fanny. Can't a man just stand and look at the scenery without having to have an x-ray? Well, the scenery's even prettier sitting down. Oh, very well. Oh! oh. Henry, you've broken something. But I think I'll go back to Seacliff this afternoon and stay with Paul and Joan. I'll not be hammered at that, Fanny. I'll, I'll not have it. Well, she'll go back, see Dr. Thompson, have him take some x-rays of your hip, Henry. I'm well, sure... Well, what do think he has to say? Well, he hasn't opened it yet, Hazel. He spent all this time just lowering himself into the chair. I think he's broken his head. There you are, Fanny, and that's it. Why, Father? Ham, ham, ham. No wonder there are twice as many widows as widowers in this country. The average American male is verbally hammered into his grave. Uh oh, maybe I'd better come back later. Well, sit down, Hazel. He'll simmer down and apologize presently. Open Pinky's letter, Father. That should take your mind off your troubles. Yes, yes. Oh, newspaper clipping. No letter? Letter to. Here are your glasses, Father. Yes. And what's this clipping all about? Yeah. Well, I was telling Hazel the other day, Fanny, that, <clears throat> that I think Daniel has done the proper thing when a 16-year-old boy insists on leaving home for the summer. His parents are exceedingly wise to get him the most unglamorous job that can be found. Then, when it's over, he'll appreciate his home. Are you speaking to me, Henry? I was, yes. Usually, Hazel, he apologized before he tries to start another conversation. Isn't that what I said, Hazel? You agreed with me finally, I believe. I still don't think it had to be a lumber camp or peeling potatoes. I told her, Fanny, I said when it comes to the rigorous business of earning a living, she should let Daniel guide the boys. You women know nothing whatever about earning a living. He's trying to butter me up with compliments, Hazel. Father, would you mind reading Pinky's letter? Very well. Oh, oh. What's the matter, Henry? Move too suddenly? Mother, leave the poor man alone. Go on, Father, read it. Yes, yes. <clears throat> now, let's see. Let's see first what this clipping has to say. Hmm. Oh, insurance mortality rate for lumberjacks. Oh. Why, I never realized that lumbering was such a dangerous occupation. I wonder where Pinky found this. Oh, Lumberman's Journal. Yeah. Right. Henry, don't be so provoking. Huh? Stop muttering. Never mind the clipping, Father. Read Pinky's letter. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Dear Godfather, I have been lying here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Where, where, where? Yeah. Oh, my. Henry. Yeah? Father, read the letter out loud. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this poor boy is really going through it. Let him read, Hazel. Then we'll get hold of it and read it ourselves. I'm going to read it to you, Fanny. Now, listen to this. Dear Godfather, I have been lying here on my army cot with no mattress on it thinking about you. But the ropes I've woven on the cot instead of a mattress... Cut into my back, and I can't get to sleep right away unless I'm completely exhausted. So I decided to get up and write this letter because I think about you practically all the time. Well, I find that rather touchy. I think it's terrible. Well, what are they doing to the boy? I keep remembering what you told me about when you started in business, but it couldn't have been as bad as this. The title I got... Second assistant cook means I'm the one who peels bushels and bushels of potatoes and washes all the dishes for 36 men and sweeps out the bunkhouses and uh, mops all the floors. <laughs> His grammar seems a bit spotty. Oh, poor child. The cook is named Mr. Osati and hates boys. I only get 17 a week. And my take-home pay is fourteen ten. They deduct stuff from my check for the welfare funds and three or four other things, and by the time I get it, it looks like mice have been chewing on it. What kind of slavery is that? I'd just like to get my hands on that, Mr. Orsati. He seems to have retained a sense of humor. Indeed. Today, Mr. Orsati told me to use more soap on the floor, and I slipped and bumped into the shelf with all the dishes on it. Oh. Mr. Orsati says it's my fault the shelf caved in, but only about three-quarters of the plates broke and the handles on 27 cups. Mr. Osati is going to take new china out of my check, which means I won't get even my 1410 until some Saturday towards the end of August. Oh, what in the world? Oh, that isn't fair. Yeah, now listen to this. 
Whenever I eat fried potatoes, which is three times a day, I think about the wonderful meals at Sky Ranch, and I certainly love everybody in the family, and you especially, Grandfather. I dream at night about the times you've slipped me a little money without uh, without anybody... Oh, the sofa, the sofa. And down here it says, uh, you see, <clears throat> I appreciate having you for a grandfather more than I ever did, especially since I found out how hard it is to earn 17 with the mice cutting it down to 14.10. With love to you, Grandfather Pinky. <sighs> nice letter. I don't know what Daniel Murray was thinking of, getting him a job like that. Oh, hold on. There's another envelope in here. It's sealed. Uh, it, it's for you, Hazel. It says to Mother. Well, I wondered if I was being neglected. Well, such a way to treat a boy. That Mr. Osati ought to be horsewhipped. What does he say in his letter to you, Hazel? Oh, uh, uh, this is just a personal note to me. Huh? Aren't you going to read it to us? Hmm? Oh, no. It, it's just a thank you note for a, oh, for a little something I sent him. Oh. Well, such... Oh! Oh! <sighs> well, such a nice letter deserves a good long answer. I think I'll go in... Oh. Now, Henry, Bobby, you listen to me. You're to go home this afternoon, sign into the hospital, and have x-rays from head to toe. Danny, I'm all right. I'm sore, but I'm all right. I'm not so sure. Well, I am, and I'll make a deal with you. What kind of a deal? You stop hammering at me, and I'll apologize for what I said. Huh? <laughs> Come on. Come, Fanny. I was an old fool to ride that scooter. A silly, ridiculous old fool. Huh? Now, show me any other wife who's had a confession like that from her husband. Huh? <laughs> yes, Fanny. You hit the jackpot. <laughs> oh, uh, what was that that took Clifford off in such a hurry? Where did he say he was going? He said he hadn't seen Skippy this morning. Said he wanted to have a little talk with him. Oh, hello, Andy. Here you are, parked around by the back door. Hi, Dad. Just keeping out of the way of the little kids. Look, look at her gleam. Oh, it's wonderful, fella. It looks great. Gosh. Guy doesn't realize what he misses when he lives with relatives instead of with his own father. Oh. Oh, there's a little smudge of dust there under the fender. Where? Oh. You know another thing I'm glad about? I'm glad you've given me a regular name. I'd rather be called Andy. If people could remember. Well, thank you, Andy. Say, uh, did you uh, happen to see Miss Evans just before she left here so suddenly the other day? Yep. You were, uh, alone with her? Sure. I see. Um, nice girl, don't you think? Pretty nice, yeah. You didn't have any disagreement with her or anything, did you, Andy? Oh, no. We got along okay. That's good. You see, um, we all expected to stay for several more days. It was kind of surprising when she left so suddenly. Hmm? I just wondered if maybe, um... Andy, uh, do you mind telling me what you talked about? Why, you mostly, I guess. But uh, what about me? Oh, I just told her how it used to be when you were too busy to pay any attention to me and how swell it is now. All I said was I sure hoped you wouldn't get married again. You said that, huh? Just mentioned it. Uh-huh, I see. I said I like things fine the way they were right now. That's how it is. Uh, uh, Andy. Yeah? Uh, did you say anything else? No, not very much. Yeah, but what? Um, what'd you talk about after that? House guests. House guests? Yeah. House guests and grandfather. What? You know how he doesn't like house guests, but only our regular family and nobody else? That sort of slipped out. Hey, Dad, where are you going? I gotta make a long distance phone call. I didn't say anything wrong, did I? Oh, forget it. We'll talk about it later. Oh, there you are, Cliff. Nikki and Claudia are looking for you. Oh, thanks, Hazel. I gotta make a phone call first. Long distance? Uh, person to person, please. Miss Roberta Evans at San Mateo 43361. Hey, yeah, Simon Teo. Yeah, uh -huh, way. This is Elmore 16011. Oh. Hello. Hello, Roberta. It's Cliff. Yeah, I got your letter. Yeah, you just this morning. Hey, I was never so disappointed. Everybody is. Dad said that... Yeah. No, Dad was especially upset. And Andy, too. Well, look, Roberta, I've got to run into town this afternoon, so how about dinner? Oh, sure, I'm up to it. I'm all right now, but I won't be if you don't have dinner with me. 
And your date? Swell. How about 715's your house? Okay, it's a deal. How oh, wonderful. And now we turn from the Sky Ranch to the family home in Seacliff, where Joan is just getting home from her daily stint of work at the San Francisco airport. I'm in here, Joan. Oh, the library? Yeah. Okay, coming. Well, you got home all right, huh? Ken, bring you. Uh-huh. I got your message that you were leaving the airport early. Well, sit down rest your bones. You're tired after slaving all day? Oh, I should say not. I feel wonderful. Sorry I didn't get a chance to come in and see you before I left the airfield, but I was in a hurry to get to the bank before closing. I had to stop to make in South San Francisco on my way in. Oh, sure, that's okay. Then I wanted to be home early, but... That was a false alarm because they haven't arrived even now. Oh, is somebody coming? Oh, didn't I tell you that? Oh, that's right. I haven't seen you. Your grandfather's coming down. Cliff is bringing him down from the Sky Ranch. What's the matter? Anything wrong? Oh, not really, I don't think. Your grandmother called me at the field and said she thought Dad ought to have a checkup. Said he was pretty lame after falling off that scooter. Remember, just before we left yesterday? But he seemed all right when we left. Well, your grandmother said he's grunting and groaning, so she wanted me to call Dr. Thompson. I'm going to take him out and have some x-rays made as soon as he gets here. Hmm. Clifford's driving him down, you said? Mm-hmm. Cliff was coming in anyway, and he has a dinner date with Roberta Evans. Gee, I was hoping we could go down to Fisherman's Wharf and eat tonight. Well, maybe we can. We'll see what goes with your grandfather and after Dr. Thompson looks him over. Shouldn't take very long. Is it all right if I go with you? Certainly. I haven't got a date tonight, huh? No, I told Ken you and I were going out. Oh, well, that would have been fine. Sorry this came up. Oh, that's okay. I didn't feel like a movie tonight anyway. Besides, I think a couple of nights out a week is enough when I'm working, even though it is only going to an early movie. Why are you looking at me in that funny way? You're beginning to read my mind, aren't you? Oh, not exactly. You, you kind of hinted something like that to me the other day, remember? Did I? That's why I like you so much, Paul. You don't say, now you can't do this or you can't do that. You just kind of suggest something. I find myself wanting to do it. I didn't used to be that way. You're growing up, that's why. It's always much more satisfying to make your own decisions and feel that they're the right ones. Mm, hmm? It really is. Gosh, I just don't know how I'm ever going to be able to... I hear the front door? Oh, I guess that's Grandfather and Clifford. Claire? Yeah. Oh, we're in the library. Okay. Dad's here, too. All right, Dad. How are you feeling? Good. Thought you'd be here sooner than this. Well, we expected to, but I had to talk to Andy, and Mom was giving all sorts of instructions and... You know. Hi, Joan. Oh, hello, Clifford. Oh, you don't you want to sit down, Grandfather? This is fine right here. Oh, what is it? Your leg that hurts, Dan? Oh, a lot of nonsense. It's just a little stiff, and your mother's trying to make an invalid of me. Oh, she just wanted to make sure there were no bones broken, that's all, Dan. I wouldn't be up and walking around if there were any bones broken, would I? Ridiculous. Did you make an appointment with Dr. Thompson, Paul? Oh, yeah. I better phone him right now. He said to call him since you got here. Uh, that old Phil Peddler want to put me in the hospital sure as fate. Hand me the phone there, Joan, please. Oh, yeah, here, Paul. Either that or amputate. <laughs> Go to him. He wants to start a to start a major project. Okay. Mm, two, two. Dad, you admitted you were miserable all the way down in the car. Hello. Uh, may I speak to Doc Thompson, please? Thank you. I, I admitted nothing, Clifford. I simply said I felt a little cramped from riding. I always feel that way in an automobile. Hello, Doctor. Uh, it's Paul Barber. Yeah, he just got here. Now, tell him I refuse to go to the hospital. Well, he says he feels all right. A little stiff, but otherwise... Uh, well, I think so, too. Fine. Okay, doctor. I'll see you in about half an hour, then. Bye. Huh? What did he say? We'll be down at the X-ray laboratory in half an hour. No, don't fall to See, that means I'll leave him about uh, ten minutes or so. Well, I think I'll go up and take a shower. You'll take care of running Dad down and everything, huh, Paul? Oh, sure. You go ahead and make yourself pretty for Roberta. Where are you going to eat dinner, Clifford? Oh, I wanted to ask you about that, Paul. Uh, have you been to Pierre's lately? Where? You know, that French restaurant on Pine Street, Pierre's? Oh, Pierre's hasn't been open for at least five years, Clifford. Oh, hey, my 11-year blank's closing me up again. Back in 1938, Piers was the place to go. There's a new restaurant there now called Camille's. Oh, by the way, there's an excellent French place out at the beach, Madame Romaine. Good spot to take Roberta for dinner, too? Oh, perfect. Very romantic. You can eat and look at the ocean. She'll love it. There'll be moonlight, too, if the fog doesn't roll in. The Madame Romaine's it is. Uh, Yes, yes, I'll probably end up without any dinner. Be down there in that laboratory half the night with that quack medic, Fred Thompson, thumping me around, trying to find something extra to put in the bill. <laughs> you don't think we're going to take you down there and leave you, do you? Huh? 
Dr. Thompson doesn't find anything wrong, doesn't think you have to go to bed or to the hospital, Why? I told you I was not going to any hospital, Fred Thompson, to the contrary, notwithstanding. But, Dad, if there's a... You go ahead, Cliff, you're in a hurry. We'll make out with Dad. Okay. Hope everything's all right, Dad. Mm-hmm. I'll see you tonight when I get in. I won't be late. Okay, Cliff. Good luck, Dad. Huh? He said good luck. What I started to say, Dad, was that if everything's okay, you and Joe and I could go out to dinner. That is, if you feel up to it. You're as bad as your mother, Paul. Is this a conspiracy to get me flat on my back or something? Well, certainly I feel up to it. I only came in because Clifford was coming anyway. Everyone kept asking me how I felt until I took this way out to avoid further persecution. Poor Grandfather. Hmm? Would you like to go down to Fisherman's Wharf, Grandfather? Would it be fun to eat down there? Oh, immaterial to me. Probably won't be able to eat anything anyway when that sawbones gets through with me. Well, we're about to leave. You want to go in and wash up before we go? Yes. Oh. oh. Hurts when you get up, huh? Uh, one leg's a little stiff. Oh, can I help you, Grandfather? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, thank you. Perfectly all right. Perfectly all right. Gosh, he seems cross, doesn't he? Do you think there's something awful wrong with him, Paul? I don't think so. Well, why are you smiling? Something funny? I've been watching my father about 50 years now, and I've come to learn that the more he gripes, the less we have to worry about his physical condition. I'll start to be concerned when he becomes very quiet and easy to handle. (laughs) Back up at the Sky Ranch, no one was very worried about Father Barber's aches and pains until the hours passed and still no report came, no telephone calls. Hazel, I'm really beginning to worry. It's after nine o'clock. But if everything wasn't all right, Mother, Paul would have called you. Well, I can't understand why somebody hasn't called. Even your father is all right, seems to me. They'd realize I'd fret if I didn't get word. Well, it is thoughtless, of course. Do you think we should call home again? Maybe they've come in by now. Well, it's only been five minutes since I tried, Mother. Let's wait a bit. Well, let's try to get Dr. Thompson again. There's no use in that. We left word with his exchange to have him call the minute they locate him. And you know he will. Oh, dear, I suppose so. I'll be reasonable, Mother. You know perfectly well there can't be anything seriously wrong with Father. He wouldn't have been up and around today if there had been. I know, but he's not a young man, Hazel, and he took a nasty fall. That can be dangerous when you get along in years and your bones are brittle. And the way he was huffing and puffing around here before he left... I think a lot of that was because at the last minute he didn't want to go off without you. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Your father can be an awful baby at times, Hazel. No doubt about that. He'd be the last man to admit it, though. Well, can you imagine not having any more sense than to get on a motor scooter? Of all <laughs> things, if I did anything as silly as that, I wouldn't hear the last of it to my dying day. Well, you won't have... Oh, oh there they are. I'll answer it, Hazel. Now, don't hurry, Mother. If that's Henry, I'm going to give him... Hello? Is that you, Paul? Well, how's your father? And why didn't you call me sooner? I was beginning to get worried that something was the matter. Oh, no, everything's fine, Mom. We've been out to dinner. We just got home. Dr. Thompson went with it. Oh, really? Well, I tried to call you from a phone booth in the restaurant once, but your line was busy. I see. No, no, the doctor said there wasn't a thing wrong. Dad's been on top of the world. Uh, he and the doctor had a great time at dinner, uh, taking each other apart. <laughs> okay, Mom. No, Joan's here with us. Oh, just a minute. Dad wants to talk to you. Here. Hey. Yeah. She's a little put out. We didn't call sooner. Hello, Fanny, my dear. Huh? Oh, well, Paul tried at the restaurant, but he couldn't get you. We called the minute we, we got home. Oh, pretty well. No bones broken. No, but I st- still have considerable pain. Yeah, the doctor said I had quite a shock. Oh, well, I had to keep up my end at dinner, Fanny. I didn't didn't want to be a wet blanket. Yes, yes. All right, my dear. Yeah, good night. I will. Goodbye. Is Grandmother sore, Grandfather? If you mean by sore, was he was she perturbed? Then the answer is yes. I'm the one who is sore, using the word in its pure sense. The result of abrasions and confusion. Okay, Grandfather. <laughs> well, I think I'll go up to bed, Paul. All right. I'll be turning in for too long. Good night. Good night. Good night, Grandfather. Good night, my dear. Oh, thanks for going to Fisherman's Wharf. It was a lot of fun. Yes, yes. I'll see you in the morning, Uncle Paul. Fine. Wake me up. I will. Did she call you Uncle Paul? Yeah, she calls me that every once in a while now. Never heard her do that before. What's she up to now? She's not up to anything, Dan. 
Called me that because she feels like it and for no other reason, I'm sure. Trying to get around you in some way, more than likely. Dad, must you be so suspicious of Joan? You don't give her a chance to show you what wonderful qualities she's got. When I see them, I'll be very happy to recognize them. Honestly, Dad, for a man who's been around children as much as you, I'm amazed, really amazed at how little understanding you have sometimes. Very well, for But your understanding, as you prefer to think of it, is simply indulgence. Overindulgence. And I want you see it my way before this summer is over. But, Dad, can't you see the change in her? Everybody else is noticing. Claudia and Nicky are delighted. Oh, she seems happier, of course. Why shouldn't she? She's down here, away from her parents and the restraints that parents impose. She comes and goes at will. She does nothing of the sort. She never steps foot out of this house, and I don't know where she is. And where is she gone? To a few movies. Yes, with a, with a grease monkey. All right, he's a grease monkey. But he's earning a good, honest living, and he's a good, honest Kid? Kid? Well, I thought you said he was 21 or two. And that's another thing. He's too old for Joan. Well, I'd rather have some sensible fellow his age taking her out than one of these show-off, smart-alecky kids who don't know anything. or out to find out everything they can just to show what devils they are. Do you know where this Ken took Joan the other night? To a church social. That's the way they spent the evening. Joan said she had a wonderful time. Now, you can't tell me that a boy who does that... Isn't pretty darn good. Very well, Paul, very well. All I maintain is that Joan belongs with her parents. Then if something happens, they're responsible. If Joan gets involved in an unpleasant situation this summer, you're going to be a very sorry man. And you'll have no one to blame but yourself because you engineered the whole thing. I accept full and complete responsibility because I have the utmost confidence in Joan. She's got all the fine qualities to make a wonderful woman, and nothing is going to shake my faith in her. She just needs a chance, that's all. Yes, yes, have it your own way. Hi! Uh, Clifford, you home? Yeah, that's right. Light's the front door, Claire. We left it open for you. Yeah, I did, Paul. What's the report from the doctor? Just what I said it would be. Nothing, nothing at all but a few bruises. Well, good for you, Dad. Aren't you home a little early? Yeah, a little bit. Roberta had to get up at the crack of dawn, so I took her home. Oh, had a swell dinner. So did we. Dr. Thompson went with us. He and Dad had some great laughs. We called Mom. She was a little miffed that we hadn't called sooner, but I think we squared ourselves. Yeah, you might have. I'm not so sure I did. (laughs) Dad had a marvelous time all through dinner, and the minute he got on the phone to Mom, you'd have thought he'd broken every bone in his body. (laughs) (laughs) Very funny. (laughs) Well, did you patch up everything with Roberta? Oh, I got a great idea. She's keen about it. I'm going to bring Skippy down, and the three of us are going to have a picnic at the beach. Oh. Huh? What's the matter with that? See, um... The big trouble is that Skippy doesn't really know her. When he sees what a swell person she is, he'll forget all this feeling he's had against her. I think that's an excellent idea, Clifford. What they need is to get acquainted. Sure, and a picnic at the beach? Gosh, kids love that. It... What's the matter? You look skeptical, Paul. Uh, Paul's in an argumentative mood tonight. Don't tell me you two have been going around again. No, no, just a little forensic tilt, that's all. Well, how about it, Paul? Don't you think the picnic's okay? Look, Cliff, if you think a picnic will bring you and Roberta together, then I'd have a picnic. For a girl like that, you should be willing to move mountains. You've just heard Chapter 5, Book 71 of One Man's Family, written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 6, entitled Father Barber Predicts the Worst, will come to you next week at this same hour. One Man's Family comes to you from California. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.